record. All right, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the delay. We're having a little trouble. Uh, some people are having trouble hearing. This is recorded, though, and it will be on the uh, CTC webpage under Student Success Tools, and then you'll click on Student Success WebEx. Um, I'm Ellen Falkenstein. I'm the Program Coordinator for Developmental Mathematics. I also have Dr. Royster here with me, who is the Coordinator for the Developmental Reading and Writing. Hello, everybody. And he will be able to answer any of your questions about reading and writing. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the House Bill 2223. This was signed in June 2017. The biggest thing about this bill is that we want to accelerate underprepared students and also get them through that very first, we call it a gateway class, but the, the very first freshman level class. So the English 1301 and then the math, depending on which math they need. The House bill is asking us to do co-recs where the students will do a developmental course with that gateway course or that first uh, freshman level course. This fall, we had to have 25% of all of our developmental students in a co-rec. By next fall, we have to have 50% and then the next fall, 75% forever. As you can imagine, this is quite a challenge, but we have plans. For the uh, reading and writing right now, we have the DIRW 0493 with English 1301. It is a concurrent class. They have to take both. They meet at the same time. So it looks like you're signed up for two classes, but it's really just one big class. Dr. Royster teaches this. I have the prereqs there. Um, in the spring, he's going to do three face-to-face -face classes, and then the online version um, should kick in um, a month into spring for the 12 week session. We're also looking at uh, doing an DIRW with maybe history or government, um, some of the other psychology. freshman level classes, psychology, thank you. So upon completion of any of these co the maths also, they are TSI complete and they've met that first core requirement. Um, so far, Dr. Royster has taught this class uh, with 73 students total, and he has a 90% pass rate. All right, math is much more complicated than English. Uh, for spring, we have three co-recs. Uh, so we, we will pair a developmental course with the first level MATH course. So we have college algebra, we have contemporary mathematics, and we have elementary statistical methods. The uh, contemporary and the stats have no prereq. The students can come right in no matter what their score or what they've taken as far as developmental. It depends on their degree plan. The college algebra, uh, there is a prereq. They either need to take pre-algebra or the uh, score a little higher on the TSI, the 336 plus or the ABE 56. These are all offered face-to-face -face and online except the stats still working on. So stats will probably be the second eight weeks. It'll be offered online. What happens is they come to class every day, even though the web advisor looks like it's Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, we teach the math curriculum and we do it just in time for the developmental based on where the students are. We have target activities where they get to bring in problems one day a week. We have a special tutoring lab just for them. So lots of resources for these. College algebra we've been running for uh, a number of years, as you can see from spring 13 uh, till now, we've had 868 students go through at a pass rate of 88%. Now we know this is going to go down a little because the state changed the cut scores and lowered my cut scores a little bit, but contemporary, we've only had 11 students finish contemporary. We had 91% pass rate, but that's not statistically significant. Uh, we have more this semester and then stats is new for spring. Just a little humor since we're talking about math and most of you probably don't want to talk about math. All right, the co -recs are what the state want us to do and that's in our numerator for the 25%. 
So we had to come up with faster ways to get students through the other developmental before they can get to a co-rec. So this is an NCBO. It does not count as a co-rec, but it's a great class. The students come into the lab and they work. It's kind of self-paced with us following behind them. They can complete up to three levels. Um, I'll let you read the rest of that because I have to keep moving. These slides will all be available on the website. The big thing is that they get rewarded for what they already know. They only work on what they don't know. And then they take the final exam, they move on to the next level. So again, they can finish up to three levels. But this is not a co-rec. Uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. In this class, um, we've heard rumors that people are saying that this class has a very low pass rate. That is not true. We've had 804 students go through so far. 85% pass at least one level. So passing one level doesn't make this accelerated, but they're not behind either. That's fine that they're um, passing one level. 40% of the students actually get through the two levels and 8% get through all three levels. But while they're there, we're able to advise them. We're able to help them get to the next class. 15% uh, either fail or withdraw. Most of them just stop coming. It's not that they can't get through the work. To put this in perspective, if they go to the regular pre-algebra class, we have a 46% pass rate, whereas in 499, we have an 85. If they go pre-algebra and then beginning algebra, 22% get through both. And in our class, 48% get through both in one semester. 491 is the same idea, but it's for students who don't want to work on their own the whole time. They're in the classroom two days a week and in the lab two days a week. The instructor's in the lab with them. And so they will hopefully get through pre-algebra and beginning algebra, and then they are in great shape to go on to the college algebra program. So this is really for students who need the college algebra. Again, an NCBO. So here's a quick summary. We have the three co-recs, we have the two NCBOs. By, uh, in spring, we're gonna have very little traditional. Probably by fall, we'll have none of these traditional classes, just maybe online to get a few people through. So this is what our program is going to look like. Can you guys see that arrow? Okay, it's those first five. I'm sorry, I'm moving my mouse around thinking you guys can see it. But you're going to have to. All right. Petition. Um, we are we're really serious about this petition. We have a petition on beginning algebra and, and intermediate algebra. The only students who should be in those classes are if they're nursing students, I'll talk about them in a minute, or if they are um, STEM majors that really want to go through all of the classes. We really need to get the, these students in the co-rec and the only way to educate them is to have them come to my office or to email me at dev.studies. So please do not just push them through. This file will also be on the website. This is all of our degree plans right now at CTC and the options for math. So if there's a few X's, that means that they have a couple of choices, but um, I wanna point out that 332 is actually the, the first math. It's the, I don't wanna say the lowest math, but um, I, I just lost my whole train of thought. College algebra is much harder than 1332, even though the number is smaller. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so students need to check if they only need contemporary and they don't need um, more than that to go to the university, then that's what they should take. A lot of universities want the statistics, and then of course a lot of degree plans want a college algebra. Um, so this is just for CTC. We use this all the time when we're talking to students. And then this is from the Dana Center at the University of Texas. And this is all of the state universities and the math requirements there. So this will help you if a student's planning to go to a certain university. Of course, it's only the public schools. That would be, the link will be there also. Oh, sorry, Dr. Royster. <laughs> I had to do it. All right, I have a few slides that 
uh, help you if you're advising a student. So these first few are based on the TSI score. There's also going to be a file that has all of this on one page on the website. So if they score between 0 and 335, they can come to either of these co-recs, or if they need college algebra, they can go to either of the MCBOs. So the one where they work in the lab the whole time or the one that's both classroom and lab. But please look at the degree plans and see if they can go right into this. If they score higher or if they're ABE five or six, then they have the choice of any of those three co-recs. And I know students are worried about coming in, but these really are, even though they look like two classes, it's one big class and they're not even gonna notice that they're taking two classes. We've got lots of resources. Now, the nursing students, we, they're a whole different story. If they're on the pre-nursing degree plan, they do not have room for MATH, uh, but they have to be TSI complete to get into the nursing program. So we're working on some ways for them to not have to take 400, 401, and 303. We're working on them taking the 491, and then we throw in a little workshop, and they can take the TSI test again. Um, we're also doing the um, 499 and same thing, two levels, factoring, and take the TSI again. We'll see how that does. But if they're still on the general degree plan, I highly recommend that they take the stats correct and they're done. They'll be TSI complete. They'll have that math class that they need for the university if they're headed to the university for the BSN. So have them come talk to me, please. These slides are based on students who are already in a class. So this is if they're in pre-algebra. If they pass, they have um, those two choices. If they fail, they still have choices. Um, they can either go to one of the co-recs or they can go to 491. They will not be behind. They'll catch up on pre-algebra and they'll do beginning algebra. So they will not fall behind. Same thing for beginning algebra. Their choices if they pass or they fail. And we do email this out to students and let them know as well. So they might come to you with an email. Same thing for intermediate algebra. All of them are here. <laughs> and I also have a, a piece of paper that has all of these on one page. This is for 499. Again, we tell them it's okay if you only get through one level. We have lots of options. Um, if you get through all three levels, that's that's great too. All right, there's been a lot of confusion about this. Um, I, Ms. Prescott, Professor Prescott, who is the math department chair, has laid this out. What we're going to do is we'll let students come right out of beginning algebra and go into contemporary mathematics or statistics because they really don't need that last algebra intensive intermediate algebra. They will have to get help. They either need to see an advisor or come see us. So if they complete beginning algebra, if they complete the 491 NCBO or two levels of the 499, they can go right into the math class. They also can if they transfer in uh, with 401 beginning algebra course equivalent. If they test into a mini intermediate algebra though, we want them to come to a co-rec because they've not done any math at college. So they don't have the time management skills, the study skills, the My Math Lab skills, and we would like them to get that. But by doing the co-rec, they're not going to lose any time. They have, they're going to take the developmental and the math at the same time and be done with their math in one semester. This is our lab. All right, this is just a few of our special initiatives that we do. This is called the tad bit extender. This is free. It does not, um, the students do not have to sign up for it. I reach out to them at the end of the semester. If they have a D in a traditional class or the NCBOs, then I offer this class to them. It's in between the two semesters. They get to come take a diagnostic on the first day. We see what they need to study, and then they get to take the final exam again. They have to pass the final exam. They can't just 
get high enough on the final exam that with their homework and quizzes, they pass. They have to literally pass the final exam. If they do that, we change the grade to a C. It, now they get a second chance, so it's only a C no matter what. Even if they get a B on the final, they still, their class is a C. And they, they get invited to this from us. We also have DSMA 193. This actually is a co-work. This is for students who are in college algebra. It's really geared for the students who are TSI exempt. They go take college algebra and they realize very quickly that they need some extra help. So it starts in the second week, and then if I have enough students, the third week. It's an eight week course. It's one credit hour, so they only have to pay the one credit hour. And they work with the instructor and tutors in the lab only on what they need so that they can be successful in college algebra. And then finally, this is a new one, um, although you've probably seen the, the reboot, but we didn't have it as an actual class. We were just kind of winging it and doing this. So this is, again, a one credit class. They can take it online or they can come in between the semester and see me and do it face to face and learn what they need. Uh, this is for students who took math 1314, but they really should have taken 1414 because they want to go to pre calculus. So um, the pre calculus now has a prereq of math 1414 or 1314 and this class. Uh, the math 1314 instructor sent out an email this week to all of those students and I work with them directly to get them through this course of, and then we've signed up for a pre-calc. This is my contact information. Please feel free to call me, email me. Uh, for students, I'd rather them go through the dev.studies and I answer that every day. So I will talk to them and talk to them about their options or they can speak to Erica and she can help them with all of this also. I know that was a lot, and I know I went fast, but you can look through the slides later if you think of something that you want to ask me. I'd be happy to help, or if you have questions right now. Okay, can I ask you a question? For the transfer student that comes in that was PSI complete non-algebraic, right. can they, and that now they find out they need to take college algebra, can we enroll them directly into college algebra or do they need to take a prereq? Right, so according to Professor Puscott, who is department chair in the math department, if a student comes in TSI complete non-algebraic, meaning they took contemporary stats and they did not, um, of course, score the 350 on the TSI. And they need to go to the co-rec with the college algebra because they do not have enough algebra to pass the math 1314. So they're going to be frustrated if they go to math 1314. So that course is DSMA? Right, that's the DSMA 493 with the college algebra. That way they will get, we teach in that class, we teach beginning algebra, intermediate algebra, and college algebra, but only what they need from each of those. On this Alphabet Extender, does that apply to online students or just classrooms? Where they can, if they don't pass, they can come back. Yes, it's only classroom because we work with them very closely. Our concern with online is it's a non proctor test, so it's a little hard to know. Um, although I do offer it to the 493-1314 students, the online students, so that they can pass the developmental part and just take the college algebra again. Okay. Good question. I think the rest of you out there are just Overwhelmed, huh? I'm sorry. I know that math is very confusing. We are hoping to get it less confusing. We're hoping to get down to those five classes, and that's it. I'd like to add on to Marsha's question. Um, so, are they not, can they not TC 1303 because you're facing now? Or would that be 
an option as well as the that. Yes. Yeah. So the question was if they're coming, they're transferring in, they're TSI complete, but non-algebraically. Yes. For now, they can take the 303. As but as soon as that's phased out, of course, that's not going to be an option. Now, the other thing we could do for them, though, uh, although the 303, I have to honestly say, I know being recorded, but it is harder than mm -hmm. the 493 that's paid, phased or paired with the college algebra. 303 covers everything for intermediate algebra. When you're in a paired class, it's a just-in-time teaching. So we only teach what they need from the from the developmental intermediate algebra to be successful in the college algebra. They don't get everything. So unless they're a STEM major, I I really don't see a reason to learn all of that material from 303. But if you're a STEM major, that's another story. And so we do have to think about that. We may always have one 303 just to cover the STEM majors and the nurses. But the advantage to take an 0493 is they can take college algebra at the same time. Correct, and they're done in one semester. Right, that's the other thing. If they take 303, they have to do it in one semester and then take college algebra the next semester, and they're taking two semesters to get through the math. I need to add a slide, apparently. <laughs> I should have you when we talked about it yesterday. Anybody else? Okay, um, you want to close that? It doesn't look like we have any other questions. The slides will be on the student services tools website along with the recording. So, and the slides have a lot of good information. I'm sure you'll be able to refer to those when you're advising students. Did you have another document you didn't want it to pull up? No. You know, that short. That'll be included with the PowerPoint. Right. That'll be included. Yes. With, okay. with the recording of the WebEx, there will be the PowerPoint, and then there are four other documents. So the documents I showed you, the, the transfer, transfer inventory, although that's huge, so you might want to just keep it as a PDF, the degree plan, and then I have these slides reduced down into a one page document so you can just have to refer so you don't have to go through all of the slides. I was trying to follow the rule, but I didn't do a very good job. What was it? 10 words? Not 10 <laughs> words per slide. I'm not sure. I know I have way too much on my slides, but I tried to make it look a little better. Well, thank you so much. And please feel free to reach out to us or, or have the students reach out to us. We're happy to help them and get them into the right class. Thank you.